The jurisdictions in this country with the strictest gun control have among the highest rates of crime and murder. When you disarm law-abiding citizens, you make them more likely to be victims. If you want to stop these murders, go after the murderers. What happens in this committee after every mass shooting is Democrats propose taking away guns from law-abiding citizens, because that's their political objective. But what they propose, not only does it not reduce crime, it makes it worse. The jurisdictions in this country with the strictest gun control have among the highest rates of crime and murder. When you disarm law-abiding citizens, you make them more likely to be victims. If you want to stop these murders, Go after the murderers. Grassley Cruz came to a vote on the floor of the Senate in 2013. It got a majority vote on the floor of the Senate. 52 senators voted for Grassley Cruz in the Harry Reid Democratic Senate. Nine Democratic senators voted for Grassley Cruz, the most bipartisan support of any of the comprehensive legislation. So why did it pass into law? Because Democratic senators, including many of the senators in this room, including the senator from Connecticut who just said Republicans have no answers, filibustered the law and prevented it from passing. Demanded 60 votes. If Grassley Cruz had passed into law, Sutherland Springs very likely would not have happened. Why is that? Because the shooter there, the murderer there, had a conviction in the Air Force that the Obama Air Force failed to report to the background check system, and Grassley Cruz mandated an audit of all of the convictions to make sure the background check database has those felonies in it. Not only that, Grassley Cruz mandated that when a felon tries to illegally buy a firearm, that the Department of Justice prosecute them. The Department of Justice has a long and I think indefensible practice of not prosecuting felons and fugitives who try to illegally buy guns. If Grassley Cruz had passed the gun crimes task force that it had created, would have charged prosecutors with going after gun criminals, locking them up, and putting them in prison. That's how we prevent these. Now, we will learn in the coming days and weeks the exact motivation of the murderers in Atlanta and Boulder, Colorado. We'll learn what happened there. But we already know this pattern is predictable over and over and over again. There are steps we can take to stop these crimes. And you know what the steps aren't? The steps aren't disarming law-abiding citizens. Every year, firearms are used in a defensive capacity to defend women, children, families, roughly a million times a year in the United States. And the Democrats who want to take away the guns from those potential victims would create more victims of crimes, not less. I agree it's a time for actions, and by the way, I don't apologize for thoughts or prayers. I will lift up in prayer people who are hurting, and I believe in the power of prayer, and the contempt of Democrats for prayers is an odd sociological thing. But I also agree thoughts and prayers alone are not enough. We need action. Today, Chair Chairman Grassley and I are introducing again Grassley Cruz, and I would ask Senate Democrats including some of our newer colleagues who just got here, not to participate again in the shameful filibuster that this body engaged in in 2013. Let's target the bad guys, the felons, the fugitives, those with mental disease. Let's put them in jail. Let's stop them from getting guns. Let's not scapegoat innocent law-abiding citizens, and let's not target their constitutional rights.